Whether you want to farm out some adept weapons, master working materials and exotic armor pieces, beat a grandmaster for the very first time, or just improve your general destiny capabilities in all facets of the game, this video is for you. My name is Mactix, and today I am going to be showing you a Stream of Consciousness Grandmaster Word of Nothing run, where I essentially show you exactly what to use, what to do, where to stand, what to shoot, and pretty much everything else you can think of. And even if you aren't the Grandmaster Nightfall type, this video will show you a lot of core gameplay fundamentals that can be extremely valuable in all activities, along with some incredibly valuable Invis Hunter specifics as well. So I'd highly recommend watching regardless of your G aspirations. By the end of this video, you'll learn a ton of things about build crafting, positioning, target prioritization, ammo efficiency, and encounter strategy, all of which are guaranteed to make you a better player. And if becoming a better player, having an easier time conquering difficult activities, or just enjoying educational Destiny content are things that pique your interest, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below to help me continue making these videos and to catch them every time they get uploaded. With all that said, let's start with our team composition and builds. Since the Warden of Nothing has all three champions and a Solar Singe, my loadout is the Nightwatch Kinetic Scout Rifle, the Retraced Path Solar Trace Rifle, and the Gallahorn. My other two teammates are both rocking Arbalists, a Solar SMG or Auto Rifle such as the Callus's Mini Tool or the Summoner, and Solar Legendary Rocket Launchers such as the Hezen Vengeance. Overloads are by far the scariest champions in Destiny, so we want to make sure that everyone on the fire team has a way to stun them and negate their healing. On the other side of the coin, Unstoppables are the easiest champs to deal with, so one unstoppable weapon in my Nightwatch Scout Rifle is plenty for the entire team. The rockets are crucial for burning the boss, which is essential in the Grandmaster variant of Warden of Nothing due to the boss room being practically impossible to survive in past 15 seconds. For classes and armor, myself and one of my teammates are both running Omnioculus with Mobius Quiver, Vanishing Step, and Trapper's Ambush, while our third is rocking a Warlock with Well of Radiance and Aeon Souls for rockets on demand from champion finishers. This allows us to completely steamroll through the strike since we can afford to use rockets to one-shot champions and tanky enemies since we can easily refuel on ammo on any champion we come across. The Invis Hunters are especially crucial for that as well since they can make the Warlock invisible to safely perform a finisher on a target even in an enemy dense area. Now that you understand our class composition and build choices, let's hop into the gameplay where I will teach you all about positioning, ammo efficiency, target prioritization, and encounter strategy. And then for this first section, we'll simply play the backside and use the various pieces of cover. Keep our backs to the wall because we don't want to aggro the Overload Minotaur to push it into us yet. We just want to take our time and clean up all of these enemies, make those pods open to reveal the two additional enemies. We're just staying safe, playing back here, slowly working our way up. Go ahead and chip away at these goblins back here. Overload Mentor is stunned, but we're not going to go for the kill on the Overload Mentor yet. We're going to let him regen and kind of walk into us a little bit to get a cleaner shot on him. And we can also uh, get a finisher on him as well. So I'll shoot one rocket just to weaken him up. And then I'll keep the Overload on and we can go in for an Aeon's finisher. Get a heavy brick. Mine's going to fall off. Oh, guess you can run in those cables. Grab that, got our goblin. Drop him down. And then after you hack that, you can actually run around to the left side of this train to start running down Let's this track a little the earlier. The cell blocks are up ahead. If you're all about efficiency. We'll go ahead and kill this goblin right here. Don't really have to worry about the enemies in the middle of the track. Because the train will just run over all of them. So we just really got to get the ones on the side. Wait for the next train to come. And then we can probably ignore the ads in the middle at the very end. And actually just hop down. And here the trains actually alternate, so it's gonna go left, right, left, right. So once you see one go on the left, it'll just switch other sides of the track. And uh, Rentable Muffin, come back here to me a little bit, so I can, oh, actually you destroyed the barrel and you weren't too close, so that's fine actually. So we'll go ahead and rocket this Hydra real quick. We first get an angle on him with his shield coming around, and then boom, he's instantly dead. And then here we have a couple of Phalanxes and Incendiar. My teammates can hit the Phalanxes with Arbalist to kill them right through their shields if they want to. And then we'll just slowly take down the Incendiar. I'll shoot a rocket after I stun him to weaken him up, then we can get a finisher. Oh, actually, I don't have a rocket reloaded, so we'll just weaken him like that and then get a quick finisher. Just get our rocket ammo back. Aeons are super nice, so you can basically spam rockets throughout the entire run. 
slowly work our way back up. And then I'm going to shoot a rocket at this barrier hob. My teammates will be ready with the Arbalist to break the shield. And then probably don't need a finisher on him with the Aeons, just because we just got a finisher. We're all probably pretty low to our rockets. And then we'll jump up on the left side here to get up on this cable. And then we can literally just run all the way across the section. We don't have to worry about using sparrows or anything. Uh, we can ignore all the ads in the middle. And it's actually going to give us a really nice vantage point to take out the enemies uh, upcoming here in the back uh, from just kind of stay around on the top left and it's going to give us a really easy shot start with blowing up that barrel take out all those goblins and such and then we can actually keep running down start working on the unstoppable and this unstoppable we'll probably want to get a finisher on so we should be finishable oh i actually killed him on accident so we can just get a finisher on the barrier colossus in the back instead so we'll just clear out all the trash mobs first. I'll shoot a rocket at the Colossus to make him put his shield up. And then my teammates will Arbalist him. And then we'll poke at him a little bit so that we can get a finisher. And that's perfect. So we'll run in and get the Aeon's finisher. Load back up on heavy. And then we'll make our way through. Now for this section, we're going to have some sniper hobgoblins that we have to be really, really careful of. So we're going to play this angle particularly slow and particularly safe because we definitely don't want to get nailed by those hobgoblins. So I'm just going to shoot him to proc his shield so that when it comes back up, we can easily get the kill on him. Since they are solar snipers, they will one shot since it's a solar burn on here. So we have a second one right there. Pop it to make it go into its immune. And then we're going to hug kind of the right side over here because we don't want either of the barrier hobs to be able to get us on the top left and top right. We're just going to play this staircase head glitch as we kind of fire rockets down at the Hydra to kill the Hydra first. Now that the Hydra's dead, I kind of like to get the top right Hobgoblin next, so it'll be up on the balcony on the top right. The train will obstruct vision, but when the train goes by, you're perfectly fine to kill. So after they break its shield, I'll go ahead and fire a rocket just to take care of it a little more quickly. And we're good on him for the most part. And then we have a couple of regular goblins pushing up, so we'll go ahead and clear those. I'm peeking to the right side, making sure not to peek left, because we still have that barrier hobgoblin up on left, and I don't really want to mess with him. So I'm just clearing my way on right side first, taking care of all these before we really focus on left side, because we know they're not going to push up to us on left side. So we're just going to continue taking out everything on right side. That's pretty much everything that we need to worry about. So now we can probably go ahead and take care of the barrier hobgoblin on left side. And my teammates are just going to primarily use the Arbalos to keep the shield down. I'm not going to use another rocket just because I'm at four and he's not very safe to get a finisher on. So we'll take him out just like that. And we're going to wait for this train to pass before we go ahead and jump across. And we're going to take that top left platform. And we're just going to continue thinning out all the ads until we spawn the mini boss. Specifically, want to look out for the Minotaurs. Only the Arbalist players are going to be able to crack the shield on him because uh, none of us have any void in our loadouts. But of course, Arbalist can crack any shield. So, just going to go ahead and continue wiping out all these mobs until we see that shield go down in the back. And we have a Minotaur actually pushing behind us. That can happen sometimes. So, you just got to keep an eye out for that. Perfectly fine, though. We can go ahead and crack the shield on the Minotaur. And I'm actually just going to shoot a rocket at him just to get him out of the way for safety. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and use my super on the boss. And we'll kill him a little more quickly. Can use rockets on him too. And then he's going to come back over here. Play this head glitch right here on the stairs. Go ahead and take him out. A little bit sloppy of a minotaur kill, but it's perfectly fine. Made it through all right. What really made that bad was that we had a minotaur. Sometimes one of the minotaurs will kind of run around back here and come up uh, on the staircase and whack you from behind. So just gotta keep an eye out for that. Um, I did not and I didn't call it out for my teammates. So that's why we ended up getting in a bit of trouble. But if that doesn't happen, basically what you'll do is you'll use rockets and supers to just absolutely one shot the boss Minotaur. It'll come into the middle spawn right there first. Um, so you'll just look there primarily uh, first and foremost and try and burn him down with supers. You can plop a wall of radiance, use the taboo, use the rockets and then he's pretty much dead instantly. And then once you kill him, of course, all the other goblins will despawn. Now here, we're going to have two unstoppable incendiaries um, that will push into us. So what we actually want to do is, uh, after we clear the initial wave of Redvar enemies, we're going to want to bait them into us so we can get easy finishers and top up on our rockets. But first, we'll have a couple of legionaries and uh, scions and whatnot. So we'll go ahead and thin those out first before we work our way in. 
And then we can push up a little bit, hit the explosive barrels in the back to make it easier to clear out all the adds. And then we'll get the attention of the first unstoppable incendiary. I'm just going to poke him down. I don't really feel like using heavy on him because obviously the point of these incendiaries is to restore our heavy. Maybe I'll use one rocket on him when he pushes in a bit just to make the finisher a little easier. But my teammates are just going to use their primaries. And then he's good for a finisher. Easy heavy brick for us. And then uh, we have another incendiary. But a big thing to be careful of actually here is there's going to be some Scion snipers up here on these ledges. There's two of them actually right in the middle. Um, and they're obviously solar snipers as well, so they will one-shot you. So definitely want to keep an eye out for them. So we'll continue poking down this incendiary, making sure I'm kind of keeping my eyes over here to make sure the Scions don't have an angle on us. I'm going to give my teammate invisibility so he can back out. Get another stun on the unstoppable. We'll go ahead and beam him with my trace rifle. Get him a little weaker. And then get the finisher. And boom, we're pretty much all back up to max heavy. And then once again, I'm looking for those scions. One of them's dead. There's the second. So now we're good on the science snipers. And now from here, if we actually group up, um, if you have an invis hunter, you can actually just go invisible and just completely run past all the rest of the enemies. We'll still get platinum because we have killed all the champions so far. My other teammate back there is also an invis hunter, so we can just head back. Um, you can also have just one player run all the way back and have the other two stay because uh, if one player goes here, it'll be joining allies. So that's another option as well. If you just want one player, uh, specifically an Invis Hunter, if you have one, you can have one player go. Now, before we hop into the Mines Encounter, I do want to humbly ask that you consider subscribing to my channel if you've been enjoying the video so far. My goal is to hit 50,000 subscribers by August, and the only way I can do that is with your help. With that out of the way, let's hop back in. Now, for here, I like to move over on the left side. There's a total of five champions in here, but the first target I like to kill is the Scion up top. If you shoot him a couple times, he's going to fall off, so you do have to wait for him to come back up. But there's a bunch of different enemy types in this area, so as long as you don't really push into the middle, they'll fight each other before they focus on fighting you. So I'm pretty sure that I got that Scion Sniper right there. That's the primary target I care about. Um, so now we'll start thinning out some of the trash mobs. I'm just keeping an eye to make sure that Scion doesn't show back up. And then we can start poking down the Unstoppable. So I generally like to kill the Unstoppable and the Overload first. I don't really care which one I care first, uh, kill first, rather, sorry. Usually the Unstoppable is a little easier to kill, um, just because he doesn't regenerate health where the Overload does, um, but it doesn't really matter which one you do first. We can actually switch focus to the Overload because he has half HP. So I'll keep Trace Rifle on him. I have the Overload Trace so he won't regen health. I do have to reload it though, so hopefully I can get shots back on in time. And the Overload's dead. He's definitely the most lethal target. So now that he's gone, we can probably... Actually, I threw my grenade. We can probably go ahead and focus on the Unstoppable. Probably wouldn't hurt to get a finisher on him as well. I'm going to come back and invis my Aeons player. So he can run in and safely get a finisher. And I'm going to go with him so I can re-invis him after his finisher. And then we'll probably focus on the Colossus next. Go ahead and take out his shield with the Arbalist. I'll fire a rocket. Go ahead and work our way on him. And then it's just the two ho hobgoblins. So all of my teammates get ready with the arbalists. I'll shoot a rocket to proc both their shields. And then we can probably get a finisher on them as well if we want to. Rocket shield again. A little late on the Arbalist, but that's perfectly fine. And then we'll get in our finisher, because why not? Extra heavy never hurt anyone. So this part is the really important part that uh, teams really need to get right. So my two teammates stand right here, because there are going to be some enemies that spawn right here, specifically a barrier hobgoblin, that I want them to spawn trap. We are not going to capture the A mine. We're actually going to delay it for as long as we can. I'm going to shoot a rocket at these three goblins that spawn right back there, so they're not shooting at our back. While my teammates go ahead and take care of this barrier hobgoblin. We're just going to eliminate him instantly, and then we're going to have an unstoppable incendiary down the lane. So we'll go ahead and start working on the unstoppable incendiary next. And we're actually going to let him push into us so we can get a free finisher on him. So we'll go ahead and take care of him. All while we're completely leaving A up, because we don't want to spawn mines B and C yet by completing A. Um because we want to clear the room a little bit. We want to get these champions out of the way first. So by delaying A, we actually give ourselves more time to go ahead and clear out all these champions. Looks like we got a fake stun um, where it said it stunned him, but it didn't actually. So there we go. Now we can get a finisher on him. And now I'm going to have my teammates go over to the future location of B to go and start clearing out all those trash mobs while I'm ready to take A. 
And of course, if you're capturing a mine, uh, it will not decrease the timer. But something you can actually do is if you stand on the edge of it, um, it will not capture it, but it will also pause the timer. So that's interesting. I actually didn't even know that you could do that. It's my first time learning it. So I guess theoretically you can have infinite time to uh, hang out in this room and clear enemies, which I didn't know. And you do want to stay on this side on the lip of it because you got a lot of enemies over there. So you want to hang out over here just to, so that you're not in danger of them. So now that that's captured, both B and C are going to spawn. We're going to get B instantly, which is why both my teammates are already over here. And the second we take B, we're going to head up onto the left side balcony over here to our left. We're going to go ahead and capture B, and then we're going to move over to the left. And we're going to bait that overload minotaur to kind of walk into us. We can kill these three goblins in front of us first just to get them out of the way. But then we're going to try and get the attention of the overload so that he walks into us for an easier kill. And then I'll stun him with the overload. I'll double rocket him just so he dies instantly because overloads are quite uh, annoying. And then if you have an invis hunter, what you can actually do is you can just send the invis hunter here and he can take C completely um, on his own without even have to worry about killing any of the ads. My two teammates can stay perfectly safe. Um, if you do not have an invis hunter, then obviously you'd have to come as a team and capture this and fight through the ads. But it's as a team when you're all three of you are killing the ads, it's not too hard. Another thing I do want to notice, occasionally that Overload Minotaur we killed can respawn. I don't really know what triggers it. Sometimes he does and sometimes he doesn't. But in my experience, as long as you kill him the first time, you do get Platinum even if you don't kill him after he respawns. So um, if you do see him respawn and you're like, oh no, he's he's up there. We can't capture the mine because we have to kill him first. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much. I would be perfectly comfortable just finishing the capture of the mine. So just going to go ahead and safely kill the boss now. Here we definitely want to make sure that we're hanging on to our supers because we're going to want them for the boss. Um, but we can be a little liberal with our rocket use because we have four champions uh, that we have to kill before the boss room. Um, and obviously we can kill them with Aeon's finishers. So we can get plenty of heavy uh, before uh, we do the final boss. Um, so if, if you know you want to use like if you want to get down to like four rockets maybe three rockets in this section to kill the colossus a little more quickly if you're going for speed that's perfectly fine and once you kill him of course everything else will despawn you can also run around the arena and pick up any uh bricks that are laying around uh that you might have not picked up, picked up previously and for this part just for extra safety what i actually like to do is uh open the chest and then run outside of it so the bubble pops up and that way you can have your teammates go down one by one so that they're not uh, stepping on each other's heads occasionally when all three fly down at the same time. Uh, you can get like weird physics interactions and one of your teammates will kill the other by like Goomba stopping on them. I don't really know why or how it happens, but um, definitely a lot safer to just do it this way. And then you wait for the shield to dissipate and then you can go down one by one. So, but both my teammates could come down right now. We're good to go. You just want to make sure that one of your teammates um, you definitely don't want to jump down into the dome until all three are at the bottom here, ready to jump down together, because it'll do adjoining allies and it'll spawn like over there, um, which is not a great position to be in. So you just wait until everyone's down and then you go down all together. So we'll hop in. Uh, Overload Minotaur is the number one focus. So we're going to go ahead and stun him and then we're just going to rocket the hell out of him. We're not worried about getting a finisher on him or anything like that. We just want him dead because he's pretty much the only thing that can really kill us. And then next is going to be the Unstoppable Incendiar. We could get a finisher on the Ensemble Incendiar, but it's probably not really necessary um, because we can get finishers on the Barrier Colossus and Barrier Hobgoblin. So I'm just going to not even worry about getting a finisher on him. We don't really want to go out in the line of fire. If he runs to you and you have a good opportunity to get a finisher on him, you know, go for it. It's not a big deal, but I wouldn't worry about it. Next, we're going to kill the Barrier Colossus on the right side. We'll save the Hobgoblin for last because he's the least threatening target. Um, also, uh, would love to get a finisher on the Barrier Colossus if possible, just because why not? So we can go and get a finisher. Nice and easy. And then we'll go ahead and kill the Barrier Hobgoblin. And after we kill the Barrier Hobgoblin, the boss is going to begin to spawn. So we're basically going to want to be at the front of the room, ready to go. I'm going to have my Warlock place as well of Radiance right here, where I'm currently standing. And we're just going to get ready to absolutely fry the boss with rockets. I'm going to pop my Tether for the debuff. And we're just going to nail him with rockets. Stay in the well so that if the boss hits you, it doesn't kill you. Because Laser Beam does hurt, especially if you're not in the well. And you can kind of play near cover too, so that if you do get weak, you can just slip in and out of cover. But 
You spam him with rockets in a well. You got one Galahorn, two legendary rockets. Throw a tether for the debuff, and the boss is going to die in basically five seconds, and you're completely good to go. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to drop a like and leave a comment down below letting me know what other activity or classes you would like to see me do this style of video for. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.